Stress is God's way of training you. It's preparation. But what most people do is, see, once you get stressed, you don't want that no more. So now you give up, you thoo. Nobody likes stress because some people just let they self go. But you got to, in order to develop and to change and to grow, stress is necessary. So you got to be willing to go get it every day. There's a story my father told me all the time. Now I've heard it several different ways. He said, son, he said, every morning on the plains of the Eastern Serengeti Desert, there arises a gazelle that realizes that he was run faster than the fastest lion or he will be eaten and he will die that day. On that same desert arises in the morning a lion that realizes that he must run faster than the fastest gazelle or he will starve and he will die that day. He say, son, the moral of the story is no matter who you is, when you wake up in the morning, you need to be running. Greatness. It's just something we made up. Somehow we've come to believe that greatness is a gift reserved for a chosen few, for prodigies, for superstars. And the rest of us can only stand by watching. You can forget that. Greatness is not some rare DNA strand. It's not some precious thing. Greatness is no more unique to us than breathing. We're all capable of it. All of us. I always believe leaving no stone unturned. That's what makes you a champion. Sometimes the first year you say, well, you know, I'm so healthy now, what difference is it going to make? You've got to be smarter than that. Just because disaster doesn't fall on us at the end of the first day doesn't mean disaster isn't coming. You've got to be so smart that you look down the road and say, will the errors in my present judgment of philosophy, what's that going to cost me in one year, six years, one month, six months? I'm telling you the money cost and the health cost and the success cost is too gigantic if you look down the road a little ways and say, are there errors in my current judgment like an apple versus a hurt bar? Is that just a good illustration of some of the rest of my errors in judgment? If it is, that's where I found myself at age 25. I started working when I was 19. I met my teacher who helped turn my life around when I was 25. That's six years. At the end of the first six years of my economic life, I've got pennies in my pocket. I've got nothing in the bank. The creditors are calling saying, hey, you told us the check was in the mail. I'm embarrassed. I'm behind on my promise. I live in America. I'm 25 year old American male. I got a nice family, every reason to do well. And I'm messed up. Now what's messed up? I used to think it was the community that was messed up. The country was messed up. The government was messed up. Those Democrats ever get in the White House, that'll really mess things up. The Republicans stay in power, that'll really mess things up. The economy was messed up, interest rates are messed up. I thought all this stuff was messed up. Then I found out that's not what was messed up. I was criticizing the only thing I had to work with. What was really messed up was my own personal philosophy. My own errors in judgment in my own personal philosophy brought me in six years to pennies in my pocket, nothing in the bank, and trying to explain why I wasn't doing well living in America, a 25-year-old American male, got a family every reason to be with. Now, once I understood this, here's the formula for failure, errors in judgment, being lax about developing your own personal philosophy. I'm telling you, it's called accumulated. Doesn't matter whether it's your health or your bank account. Guy's got an empty bank account, probably has high cholesterol. Why? Over the last six years, he never paid attention to either one. And it doesn't matter whether it's a dollar or whether it's your money or whether it's your cholesterol count. All you got to do is commit the errors and just because disaster doesn't fall on you at the end of the first day that you don't eat an apple. You say, well, I didn't eat an apple today and tonight I'm not ill. Well, you got to be brighter than that. Someday you got to leave first grade. See, I'm a seed. I really am. I, see, but a seed 
has to be planted. A seed got to have dirt put on top of it. If you take a seed and throw it on the concrete and walk off, the sun just burn it up. But guess what? Logically, in my mind, it doesn't make sense that to grow something, you should dig a hole, put it down in there, and cover it with dirt. Logically, that don't make no sense to me. But oh, though. See, dirt is necessary for growth and development. Dirt builds character. Dirt, dirt gives you the push-through factor. Dirt makes you come with it when you don't feel like coming with it no more. And you get dirt in a lot of different ways. All of y'all that had dirt thrown on you. And dirt ain't always what you want. It's somebody talking about you down on your job. It's somebody accusing you of something that you didn't do. It's somebody telling you you ain't going to make it. It's somebody sharing information about you that ain't true. That everybody get dirt put on. But see, when you're getting put under that stress, please know God is always working. God is always working, so I smile. Because I know he back there. See, that dirt builds character in you. When they're talking about you, it teaches you to withstand it. Then it gives you something to push through. So when you put the seed and you put the dirt on it, if you understand stress, stress really ain't just dirt. See, they don't call it dirt when they plant it. They call it soil. Because, see, soil has nutrients in it. What the nutrients, when people are talking about you, dogging you, lying on you, backbiting, stealing from you, talking about you, they're actually putting nutrients in you. When you're out there partying, washing around, someone out there at the same time is working hard. Someone is getting smarter and someone is winning. You never want to fail because you didn't work hard enough. But if you want to win, there's absolutely no way around hard, hard work. No pain, no gain. We're wired differently. We have to set a goal. And if we hit that goal, we're guaranteed to make sure all that other stuff in the middle is going to happen. Why three o'clock in the morning? Why don't you sleep? My appetite. My appetite. I see it. I want more. I can do more. If I accomplish this, Without a father, when I, if I accomplish this with my mom being a teenage mom, if I accomplish this as a high school dropout, how many of you believe in your life that your worst day can become your best day if you turn it around? Now let me give you the secret to success: formula for failure: a few errors in judgment repeated every day for one month starts the week, starts the disaster process. You can imagine what happens. Now here's the formula for success: a few. Simple, difficult, practice every day. You started a whole new process called a whole new life. A few simple disciplines practiced every day. And if you decide today to go for the apple instead of the Hershey bar, I'm telling you, you have begun the process of turning your life around. And if you keep up that process, not only with your health habits, but with your money habits, and with your communication habits, with your sales habits, management habits, and every other habit that you've got, if you'll start that process, eliminate the errors and replace it with discipline practice, tell you to start this process of life change immediately. After today, you don't ever have to be the same again. Only by choice. You don't have to walk out of here the same as you walked in. Only by choice. You can start a whole new process. You say, well, Mr. Ron, is it that simple? Yes, it's that simple. Where else would you start? but with an apple. You don't have to start with something staggering. What if you should be walking around the block for your good health and you don't? What will that do in six years? I'm telling you, the word is disaster. You could and you should and you don't. Here's an even stronger word. You won't. I mean, don't might mean you're careless. Won't probably means you're stubborn. And either one's called disaster. Could, should, don't. I'm telling you, that's why at the end of five years, I've, six years, I found myself with pennies in my pocket, nothing in the bank, creditors calling. Could, should, won't. Could, should, don't. It's called disaster. Now, how do you change all that? The next six years, I got rich. The next six years, I became a millionaire. By the time I'm 31, I'm a millionaire. How about that? You say, well, Mr. Rohn, what happened? 
Well, strangely enough, during that second six years of my economic life, the government was about the same. I'm telling you, taxes were about the same. My negative relatives were the same. I'm telling you, the economy was about the same. And prices were about the same. And everything else was about the same. Circumstances were about the same. Then how come I got rich? How come I totally changed my life? I was not the same. Everything you see above ground that blossoms and plants and grows and that's beautiful, it was underground one time. All them potatoes, collard greens, they was underground one time. Them apple trees, they was underground one time. So they had to prove theyself. So you want to be successful, well then you got to prove yourself. You got to push through the dirt. You got to come up through here. You got to come out. Then you sprout and then Bishop say, then you become a tree. Next thing you know, you got fruit. So when you under stress, take the stress for what it is. Don't get fooled. Don't just think, I don't work. Man, Lord must not mean for it to be. What you tripping for? What you talking about? How you think you're going to be a plant, a tree, a flower, a bush, and ain't no stress? How you going to get to be that without no dirt? I expect people to talk about me. Matter of fact, I look forward to it now. Do your thing, because if I can weather what happened to me and my family earlier, you can bring whatever you got now. There's some more stuff going around now that's about to happen. Bring it. Because now I have developed a character that is stress. I have soil, enough dirt on me that is providing me with nutrients. Do you realize that every day you thought you wasn't going to make it? Do you remember them days where you thought it was absolutely unbearable and you thought you wasn't going to endure that one? Do you know that your survival rate for every last one of them bad days is 100%? If I can accomplish these things from this start, now that I'm at this place, knowing what I know now, Hi, welcome back to Mind Control, where we inspire and motivate you. Hope you enjoy the video. Purpose. What's your purpose? Why? Why are you doing what you're doing? Why are you doing all the hard stuff? Why do you get up every day and look for motivation? Now, I don't know what yours is, but I know mine. You know, I hear people say, oh, you got the fancy car and you got the the jet and you got the wife and you got the kids and you got the life and you get to travel and speak. Not, none of those things, because we all know the people that have the this, this six or seven or eight or 12 or 20 cars. I was looking at this house the other day, it's got a 20 car garage. And I'm like, dude, what, why would you need a 20 car garage? Certainly I get it. I get it that somebody's got so much money and so much wealth that they just have to continue to buy stuff or they got three or four or five homes or two or three jets or whatever the deal is, right? But the reality is that doesn't fill me up. You know, what's always filled me up, even when I was, and I got the fancy stuff. Look, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not uh, bouncing on the, 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 the fancy stuff. I like nice things too, like anybody, but when is enough enough, right? When do you have too many nice things and find out the well is empty, you, the vessel. And for me, like, I want to help people. I've always wanted to help people. Ever since I was a little kid, I wanted to help people, particularly after my dad died, because I wanted people to help me. And maybe that's where it comes from. Maybe it comes from some, some wound, some early Maybe not a wound. Maybe, maybe, maybe it was always there and, and, and the loss of my dad and realizing that I needed uncles to fill in the spot, the mentorship and the almost like a life scholarship, a coach. I needed a coach. I needed attention in school and I didn't get it. Um, maybe that's what like spurred this that I'm going to help people. You know, I talk about being other people's uncle. People call me Uncle G. Literally, I don't care if you have any money or not. Okay, I already got mine. My money's so right, and I'm and I'm so I'm, I'm grateful that my money's right. I want to help other people get their money right. I talk about money a lot because, you know, if the school system that I went to, all the way through college, in an accounting degree, there was never a discussion about money. And for me, I'm trying to fill the gaps in between your education from your parents 
And that guy's upset. Miseducation, whether it be a church or school or home, don't talk about money. You don't need money. Money won't make you happy. Money is the root of all evil. All these things that we've been taught. Um, I'm here. I'm, I'm here. I talk to you about money every day because nobody told you the truth about money. Do you need money? You don't need money to buy sparkles in the roof. That's just dumb. It's beautiful. It's nice. But how many you need? How many do you really need? You know, and this is this is what me and my wife talk about all the time. Okay, what is our purpose? And my purpose is to help people. My goal is to wake people up. I got a very strong message. It, it, it agitates some people. I know I got a style that, uh, that, that that doesn't accommodate doesn't accommodate everyone. But I'm trying to break through all the noise. You know, you got a lot of noise in the world. Got a lot of garbage in the world. Most of it's just putting people to sleep. So when you hear me yelling, showing off. I'm just trying to get your attention. My purpose is to wake you up, okay? I want to help you. I want to help as many people as I can. I'm getting ready to go into a sales meeting right now. There's going to be 75 people in this meeting. This is my office. This is my group. We have another 150 people in the field of my real estate company. For too many years, I stayed small. I stayed little. I needed somebody screaming at me. I needed somebody to tell me the truth, like blow up, dude. You gotta blow up, but you need a purpose to do that, okay? My purpose is to help people. I wanna go down, not for the money that I made or the books that I wrote, but the people I helped. And I want you to be one of them, okay? My purpose is to wake you up, to give you the truth, to keep you on the path. If you're in India right now, you're in South America, you're in China, you're in Hawaii. I don't care where you live, your race, your color, your religion. I will help you. Okay, I will help you. I don't need your money. I need your willingness to change your life. That fills me up more than any amount of money. Fills me up more than a plane. Fills me up more than a car. I want to be responsible for more than just myself, my wife, and my kids, and my 75 employees here, my 150 out on the road in the real estate. I want to do more than just something for myself. I want to help others. So if you're one of those people and I can help you, let me know how in comments. How can I help you? What program do you need? Do you need something on sales, marketing, social media? Do you need a bigger network? Do you need some help in money? I got plenty of programs. I'll give it to you if I need to, okay? God bless, be great. Everything, everything that matters in life must be built. Woo! Let me tell you, that was worth the whole trip. If it's a business, it's got to be built. If it's a family, it's got to be built. If it's a marriage, it's got to be built. If it's a relationship, it's got to be built. You will not have success waiting on these microwave relationships. Everything in life, build. You have walked away from things saying they weren't finished, they weren't supposed to be. You left people and said they weren't ready, they weren't supposed to be. You have to build a boy into a man. You have to build a wedding into a marriage. You have to build a house into a home. Build it! You know, we live in a world where opposites are in conflict and we're in the middle. There's the pull to do good and the pull to do evil, to do what's right, and the pull to cross the line. That bit of warfare goes on even in our own head, our own consciousness. When I was a little kid growing up, I remember this cartoon of a little boy, and it showed this little boy with a little devil on one shoulder and a little angel on the other shoulder. The little devil said to the little boy, go ahead and do it, it'll be okay. It'll be fine, go ahead, go ahead. And little angel saying, no, 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 don't do it, don't do it. Little devil said, yes, go ahead. Little angel voice, no, no. And I guess that's part of our life experience. It's part of the adventure. The old prophet said, love good and hate evil. And if we become educated in that way, knowing when the voice of temptation is not the right road to take, we make some better choices. When I got up this morning, a little voice said, you really don't have to do your exercises today. You could skip today. You've got some work to do, and I got in at about 1 o'clock this morning on my airline flight from Colorado Springs. 
But as recently as this morning, the little voice said, you don't have to do them this morning. But I well know that if I postpone a day, sure enough, I've got to make up for it somewhere. Maybe do a modified version if I don't have quite enough time, but don't let it just go. But we all have that. You know, that's fairly constant, what voice to listen to. I guess part of the answer here is not to become a victim of yourself. Beware of the thief on the street that's after your purse, but also beware of the thief in your mind that's after your promise. The little thief in your head that says, you're too tall, you're too short, you've never done it before, it's not going to happen for you. Others can find this book, you can't find it. If you found it, you probably wouldn't read it. If you read it, you probably wouldn't understand it. This is a constant bit of warfare going on inside of our head. So we all have to deal with that. But what I call that in these experiences is the great adventure. It seems as though God has designed human life and his own existence as a bit of adventure. First creating all the angels according to the storyteller. And we might surmise, what was that for? Maybe he didn't want to be alone or maybe he wanted to create some kind of adventure for himself made one of the angels, the storyteller says, the most famous, the most beautiful, the leader. And finally, Lucifer gathers up a third of the angels, makes a move on God's throne, loses, giving us a bit of insight, not much detail. I guess most of it's left to our imagination, which is probably what the storyteller wanted to create. Here's a few details and leave the rest to your imagination. So it seems like in the beginning, before the beginning, God, it seems, was interested in adventure. But I guess, if you boil it down to something very simple, it says, would it be possible to win if you couldn't lose? And almost everybody says, well, no, it doesn't seem possible that you could win if you couldn't lose. So there has to be an adventure in order to have a victory, in order to have a win, in order to overcome, in order to create something of value. You must keep pulling positively against the negative forces, but that's what creates the adventure. If you took a football today and walked out to the football stadium, put it under your arm and crossed the goal line, would we all cheer and call it a touchdown? And the answer is no. It's not a touchdown until you face the 300 pounders who want to smash your face in the turf. And if you can muscle by them, dance by the secondary, cross the goal line with the football under your arm, now we call it a touchdown, maybe a championship. But not without the conflict. But that's a good phrase. Opposites are in conflict and we're in the middle. And on any given day or occasion, that conflict can occur. There's an interesting Bible story that says there were two nice people, according to the storyteller, and it says, however, it's an interesting word, and that's where the adventure begins. However, one built his house on the rock and the other built his house on the sand. Nice people can make foolish decisions about the future and then suffer the consequences, especially when the storm comes. So the key is to try your best so many questions are not a matter of morality. It's a question of being careless or careful, being cautious rather than reckless, but not too cautious. So it's kind of an interesting challenge. If you were so cautious driving on a two-way highway, every time a car came your way, you were troubled about thinking whether or not he was going to stay on his side of the line, that you pulled off the road, wait for him to pass, then got back on the road and continued your journey. We would call that a bit too cautious. It may take you two, three days to get to your destination. So you say somehow when the traffic's coming your way on a two-way highway, you must trust at least the law of averages that says, I have a pretty good chance of arriving, even though there's not a guarantee that one out of a thousand coming my way, I'll cross the line and it'll be the end. So we do have to be cautious, but not too cautious and let those daily experiences lead us into a better life, a better month, a better year. I arrived on an airplane flight once and the flight attendant came on and said, ladies and gentlemen, you have now completed the safest part of your journey. From now on, it gets dangerous. Fasten your seatbelt. I thought that was interesting. You've now completed the safest part of your journey. According to statistics, for the miles covered, it's the safest way to go. We like to thank you so much for watching till the end. Don't forget to share your thoughts in the comments section. Please also like, subscribe, 
and share this video with your friends and families. Please watch our other motivational videos. Thank you again. A champion doesn't become a champion in the ring. The becoming happens during his daily routine. The practicing, the developing the discipline that when applied consistently can get you to the next level. When you live like this, when you get up early, when you go the extra mile, when you have painstaking attention to detail, when you live like this, when you devote yourself to your craft, when there's a sparkle in your eye to change the world and live your heroic potential, you'll be called a freak, an oddball, a misfit. But just remember this, if people don't misunderstand you, you're not playing at your personal genius. Take your seat. Take your gift. Get away from these people that's in your life that ain't doing nothing. Get away from people in your life that's hate. Get away from your family members that ain't ever opened a business. Get away from them. Don't die with this gift and don't never use it. All of y'all got this wonderful gift, but you got to use it. Where are the warriors that say, I'm going to make a decision and I'm keeping it. And regardless of how you feel about it, it doesn't matter if the world is crumbling or down around you. Just do the thing every single day, whether you feel like it or not. And we look at other people's success, and we start creating all of these excuses as to why we're not successful like them. Whenever you live insecure, you will speak like a victim. And when you're a victim, you give away your power. Listen, I'm not trying to condemn you. I'm trying to confront you. Tell me tonight, you need to get sick and tired of living in this place. There is no person above you. When you're insecure, you're addicted to man's approval. Yet what you'll find with insecure people is the more that they get man's approval, the more they want it even more. And when they don't get man's approval, they become even more toxic. Habits are the building blocks of our lives. It's what you can do every single day that matters more than anything. Devote yourself to something bigger. Be decisive about what you're going to do. Say, I'm going to do it and that's it. And then be disciplined about getting it done every single day, whether you feel like it or not. Don't base your value on what other people have said about you. Don't base your worth on how other people treated you. But you know, there's a lot of hurting people out in the world and hurting people hurt people. It's just that when you're full of pain, then you end up just putting that pain off on everybody else. You should go and live your dream. Just go see. Your real life is not in your current situation. Your real life is not in your paycheck. Your real life, he tucks it away in your imagination. Everything you imagine is a preview to a coming attraction. Once you understand that and quit looking at your imagination as hocus pocus, it opens up a wide range of things and possibilities. That simply means everything that's in your imagination is a preview of a coming attraction that God has for you. That's why when you tell your imagination to the wrong people, it don't go nowhere. Letting it go so you can grow. Develop compassion for yourself despite your human defects. You will never be perfect. You will never be perfect. You're human. You've made a lot of mistakes. Guess what? You're not through yet. You're going to do some more. Hurry up and get it over with. <laughs> you got to learn to be gentle with yourself. Make it all right. What you don't know, mistakes that you make. It's okay. Handle it. Learn from the experience. Decide that you are to be up front, to be true to yourself. Are you getting what you need out of it? Are the things that you're doing, the people that you're hanging out with, and the places and the circles that you're traveling in, does that reflect a person that actually loves themselves? You know that they don't like you. You know what they're saying about you behind your back. You know they're jealous and envious of who you are and the things that you got going on in your life and your career. And because you're so desperate to have people around you and in your life, you continue to go back. A person who has purpose in their life, they have something to go for, some meaning. 
If you have a list of high purpose in your life, it pulls you toward the future. And the more powerful the purpose is, the stronger it pulls. If you are looking to any human being to meet all your needs, you're going to be severely disappointed because nobody can do that. Only God can meet all your needs. If you are looking to any human being to keep you happy, you're going to be unhappy most of your life. Human love runs out. Human people disappoint you. So you better put your happiness in somebody and something that cannot be taken from you. You need to look to God. Because what was appropriate as a system is now inappropriate because I have outgrown the way I speak, the way I understand, and the way that I think. I am bigger than the system. The system can't put me away. I must put it away. This idea that we see other people above us, but when we look at ourselves, we're, we're, we're beneath, we're lower than. Nothing will hold you back more than insecurity. Insecurity kills more dreams than failure ever will. Some of you are like, I'm a failure. I don't have any dreams. You're lying to yourself. You didn't even try. If you don't have these strong purposes for the future, it's easy to get swallowed by a bad day. So if you want something to pull you through all kinds of challenges, all kinds of difficulties and things that come at you, you got to have something on out there beyond today that pulls you into the future. And the clearer it is, the stronger it pulls. The more dynamic it is, the more it affects your life, your spirit, your heart, your soul. And if you have good input, like good ideas, I'm telling you, there isn't anything you can't accomplish. That is purpose. You can't base your value on what people give you. They'll say you're beautiful one day and I don't care for you the next. If you don't know who you are without them, then if they leave, you'll be lost. Your identity was caught up in who they made you to be. You'll try to find somebody else to tell you who you are. You don't need people to tell you who you are. People will let you down. People will get jealous. People have their own issues. I'm gonna stay on this lower level. When you do that and you reject God's opportunity, you are left with nothing but the hope of magic. Magic is when I'm believing that I'm gonna get a blessing up here while I'm staying down here. You can't do it. It's like believing God that you're gonna get pregnant and not gain weight. I don't wanna throw up in the morning. No, all of that goes along with the process. See, we, all of us have greatness within us. But when you don't come to grips with your greatness, I'm saying that you're positioning yourself to be a miserable person. How else do we do it? Procrastination. We just put things off over and over and over again. Why? Because we haven't accepted it. We don't feel deserving. So we sabotage ourselves by not ever taking care of business. We get real busy doing a lot of things where we don't have any time. And if you will allow anyone any voice on the inside to talk you out of this moment, you will forfeit it and be stuck washing your nets when there's a great drought of fish waiting you if you have the courage to believe. I become confident when I get the right view of other people and I get the right view of myself. It's amazing, right? You ever notice that arrogance requires advertising? But confidence speaks for itself. Insecurity, cynicism, and arrogance, they're all loud. But confidence doesn't even have to speak. Where does self-confidence come from? Self-confidence really comes from feeling good about yourself. And one of the best ways to feel good about yourself is at the end of the day to know that you poured it on. You did your best. At the end of the day, when you've really poured it on and you've done all the stuff, self-confidence grows. That self-confidence affects your health, it affects your future, it affects your psyche. 
Self-confidence comes from the lack of neglect. Self-confidence means willingness to do whatever it takes to achieve. That starts to develop unbelievable self-confidence. Let me say something to you that none of your haters will ever want you to know. You are much closer to your dream than you think you are. It could happen much sooner and much bigger than you think. And it is your ability to begin to believe and get real clarity of perception, of time, believe it's going to happen sooner that will get you to act faster and be less distracted by the feedback or the weather that happens while you're on this run. It is much closer than you think it is. And it's your ability to begin to bring, not only get clear about what it is, but bring it closer. The fortune belongs to you if you start early. All fortunes that are available to humans, if you start early, the promise looms large and the odds are heavy in your favor. Now, yes, it's possible to do some radical things starting late, but when you haven't got that much time left, now sometimes the decision has to be so drastic people are not willing to make it and they're too tired and too weary and too ill. But everyone here, we've got the time over the next 10 years, we've got the time the next 20 years to make some repair now in our errors of the past and set up some new disciplines. And I'm telling you, that's gonna change everything. Self-confidence also comes from the ability to rise above your circumstances. To rise above what happens, the petty little things, the discouraging things that would sink everyone else's ship except yours. That kind of willingness to overcome all circumstances. Why spend the rest of your life being miserable, frustrated, and insecure? not really feeling as good as you have a responsibility to feel. Feeling good isn't just an opportunity. Feeling good is a responsibility that we all have for ourselves. I don't remember the last time I lost sleep over a hater and the things that people are running around saying. Why? Because I know exactly how I feel about me. These haters out there, they exist, believe me. I have them all over the place. I've had them all my life. Some of the haters in your life are the best at trying to pretend to be concerned, aren't they? They're pretending to give you feedback only to lead you in the wrong direction so you lose. And so the real haters know how to pose as critics. And so it's your ability to distinguish between these two people that's going to have everything to do with whether you succeed. Keeping the haters in your life around you and letting their feedback and criticism affect you in a negative way could steal your dream. And they are dream stealers every single time. I know what's happening. I know who I am. I know what my intentions are. I know my heart. And more importantly, God knows my heart. So for it to appear, appear to be this, appear to be that, and then you running around saying whatever you're saying about me, that's fine. You have a job to do. You're bored. You have nothing going on in your life, so you focused on my life. Confidence has to do with inspiring trust which you can only do by having faith in other people. Confidence enables you to walk into a room full of strangers and converse with anyone without fear. It makes the strangers in that room think, here is someone I not only can talk to, here's someone I want to talk to. An ill at ease person makes everyone around him ill at ease. Feeling right makes others feel right, and they in turn give back what's inside them, the very confidence that you give out. Because when you can start saying yes to loving yourself, you start to realize just how far you're able to go. And I wish people knew that the ability to succeed, it's all inside of you. And I hope and pray that for all of you, at some time in your life, you'll realize that the best version of yourself is so beautiful and so amazing. And yes, people may not accept you all the time and they may hurt you, but I don't want you to keep that in because you were meant to be a certain type of person and there's somebody out there in this world who needs to see you for who you are. I don't care how pretty you look on the outside. I don't care how much you dress it up. 
I don't care what kind of makeup you put on it. Insecurity on the inside is one of the ugliest traits that you could ever walk out. It's just not who you're called to be. There's so much more in store for you. Well, I'm going to be selfish and take care of myself more, which I haven't for a decade. I'm going to tell you what. You owe it to yourself, everybody. Right. Whether you've been wounded or not, right. wherever you are in life, because the fact of what you just said, you got to remember this. If you don't take care of yourself, you can't take care of the other people around you. Right. It's confidence that makes people want to believe what you say to them, want to accept you as you present yourself. So confidence is not some little thing. It's a powerful force that can grow in power and flourish. If you don't care at all about pleasing other people, if you're only living for yourself, you're a narcissist. So there's nothing wrong with wanting the approval of other people. But like all of God's good gifts, what is a good thing in your life, a legitimate need, can be misused. You have a need for food in your life. It can be misused. Everybody agree with that? Everything that God gave us as gifts actually can be misused if we don't handle it correctly. How do I learn to believe in myself so that others will believe in me too? A truly confident person's belief in himself is strong enough so that he's able to believe in others. Conversely, Distrust in yourself breeds distrust in everyone you meet. A confident person gives you confidence. She creates confidence in others. The strength of her character makes you a stronger character. If you keep doing what you've been doing, you're going to keep getting what you've been getting. If somebody who had come from the bottom and got to this position I'm in told me that this is the way I would try, if I was you, I would try that. I bet you it'll work. Credit goes to our awesome patrons who make videos like this one possible. Consider joining them to support our work. You can also support us by subscribing to our channel and clicking the bell button to get notified when our new videos are released. And as always, thank you for watching.